<laughs> All right, guys, we're back out the range. We seem to have started this little thing about buying cheap guns. <laughs> Uh, Jason and I have been traveling around to all these different gun stores trying to outdo each other with the cheapest piece of junk we can find and uh, see if it works. And it's actually turned into be quite fun. It is, it is. I do. Yeah. We, we, we found ourselves in Gary, Indiana, where it's probably not safe to be <laughs> uh, at, at a gun store. <laughs> we have, we have uh, yeah, and we're going to hit every gun store in between. I'm going to be doing the tour of the South here pretty soon. Uh, for some work-related stuff, and uh, I'm going to try to find as many gun shops as I can so I can outdo him. And did I buy mine first, and then you bought yours, the one we have? Yeah. Yeah, okay, that's, so... That's how I beat you. Yeah, so this is how he beat me this time around. So you guys remember the revolver video? Was, yeah, it was revolver video yeah, we was, did. Yeah, He definitely got the least expensive revolver, but I think I got the higher quality revolver, but... At a good price. At a good price, yep. right? So um, this time I was just at a local gun shop, and I was surfing their used gun cabinet looking for a handgun. Now our threshold is right around 200 bucks, right? That's yep. what we agreed to? 200 bucks, no higher. 200 bucks on a handgun. What are we gonna do on a rifle? Four or five? 400, I think. Oh, so we're gonna 200 bucks on a handgun, no more than that, and no more than 400 bucks for a rifle. So I found this little gem. Quite honestly, I didn't even know it existed. And the gem that I picked up for $125, it was marked at 199, and I talked them down to 125, is this Smith & Wesson SW380. Now guys, I had no idea Smith & Wesson made this junk. I mean, I, I'm gonna go ahead and call this gun junk. It's not just affordable, it's garbage. Um, but does it work? And we're gonna find out this afternoon. And I, again, only paid 125 bucks for it. If you follow us on Instagram, you'll know when I bought it, because I actually did a video laughing about the gun in the <laughs> store when I was buying it. And then Jason went out and uh, he found a, a gun that was even less expensive. Jason, what did you find? All right, so it's 200 bucks, but the, the optimal goal is to try to find a nice gun for as cheap as you can, or what you think is like, wow, that's a big piece of garbage. I wonder if it works. I'm gonna buy it and try it anyway. So, right. The goal here is to try to get the biggest piece of junk that works, or right. the nicest gun you can buy, because the Model 10 isn't exactly. a piece of junk, it but it was a, a great price. Yeah. So it, it fluctuates what the same. The first gun I bought was a piece of junk. That thing will probably blow up my face someday. But this It one, shoots, and it, we could hit that steel ringer with it. I was really surprised at how well that gun shot. Yeah, but this anyway. one will probably blow up in your face today. <laughs> so this thing here, I mean, this is, this is premium. <laughs> oh yeah. Guys, we don't even know what it is. I don't know what it is. I really don't. I mean, it says, it says made in Italy on the side of it. It's in English got, on one side. It's got various proof marks on it, which seem to, you yep. know, it's like, like definitely Italian. Italian. Yep. <laughs> and no, on the other side, it doesn't even look like English. Yeah, just some kind of gibberish and Cal 635. Right. So, so what did we do? We shoved a 32 in it. Didn't didn't work. Didn't fit. 380 no, didn't <laughs> fit. And then we 25 auto seemed to fit in there. So yeah, we'll just go with it. So. <laughs> no, but so, this is 25 ACP. Let me see so. this whole thing. I mean, it's a guys. It's this thing is funny. It's tiny. It has made in Italy, has great proof marks on it. Hopefully you guys can see that. I'll try to get some, some still pictures. It's got little proof marks on it. it. Has a nice blued finish, says AG and a crest on this. I, I'm gonna go ahead and call them plastic fake pearl grips, but it says AG on there. And then on this side, yeah, Philly, Galaisi, Brescia. <laughs> <laughs> Cal 6, I don't speak Italian. Just butchering it, why but not? There you go, guys. That's, uh, hopefully you guys can see. We'll try to get some close-up pictures. Maybe one of you can tell us what Jason bought. Who knows, it could be great. But I can tell you right now, I got it for 75 bucks. 75 bucks. 75 bucks. So he definitely beat me on the price again. I definitely think you beat me in quality this time. It does look like a nice little gun. It, it looks all steel. I don't think this one will blow up in my face. In 25 ACP, you'd have to try to blow up in your yeah, face. It, it would. I mean, the BB guns are probably <laughs> more potent than this little thing. But, but it's all steel. It looks like it has a decent blue job on it. It's yeah. in really good shape. It's a little pocket auto. 25 automatics were popular at one time. Yeah. Uh, compared to my wonderful little Smith & Wesson, which is kind of what I'm going to go ahead and say is based on the Sigma line, which was a major flop. And I did some research on it after I bought it. And I'm not kidding, guys. This Smith & Wesson handgun, now keep in mind, Smith & Wesson's known for making quality firearms, mm -hmm. right? Nice revolvers, good automatic pistols, especially when they're in the 59 series and stuff. And even the MPs are, are well-made, even though they're made of polymer. This gun, guys, is made of Z-Mac. 
It's the same material that High Point makes their guns out of. This gun does not lock open on the last round fired, and you need a punch and a hammer to field strip it. Nice. This High Points. Nice. High Points have more features than this Smith & Wesson piece of garbage. It's, it's, Z, it's zinc. It's a zinc gun. I can't believe when I saw Smith & Wesson's logo on the side of it, I said there's no way they put their name on this. And from what my research tells me is this little ZMAC piece of junk was made for roughly 18 months and they came to realize just how bad their mistake was. All right, guys, let's find out if the ZMAC Wonder works. Let's find out if Mr. Italiano works. And uh, let's see who got the best bang for their buck. Let's try it out. <laughs> Here we go, guys. See what happens. So my little SW380 did not come with an owner's manual. It came with one magazine. I'm guessing you just have to drive that roll pin out right there to, uh, to take it apart. We may or may not attempt that. I don't know if I have a punch set in the Jeep or not. I just wanna see if the goofy thing works. Now, if you look at it from the top down, you can see how they've deeply scalloped this area so you can get a good purchase on the, on the slide. And that's gonna be handy in case you ever have to clear a malfunction. The slide itself is literally made out of zinc. The lower is a polymer, very similar to what you'd find on the Sigma. Now get this, to get the magazine out of the gun, you have to pinch it right here. You can see how I'm pinching the magazine? You have to pinch and pull, and then you can get your magazine out. The gun does not lock open on the last shot fired, has no manual safeties, has no slide release, and it has that Sigma type trigger that I think got Smith & Wesson into trouble and got them sued by Glock. All right, so let's go ahead and load up a few rounds of my Christmas, <laughs> I found this stuff in my garage, Christmas 380 ammunition this is from freedom it is a hundred grain ball round it's new new manufactured stuff it's not the reman i mean these guys crack me up i get pink boxes i found my bad christmas t-shirt box i mean I, I love the guys at freedom man they're always doing funny stuff with their packaging all right let's see what this thing does 100 grain ball rounds i think it holds six rounds one two three four Five and six. Let's see if it takes a seventh round. We'll not take a seventh round. So we got our six round pinch to release magazine here. All right, we'll shoot at this big steel plate. Now the sights on this thing, guys, this is hysterical. So again, high points have better features than the Smith & Wesson handgun does. I don't even know what these things originally sold for. I probably got ripped off at a buck 25 for it. But the rear sight is, is cast into the slide the zinc slide, and this has a trough that run, runs down the front. You have a recessed front sight in the trough. It easily has the worst sight picture of any gun I've ever seen. This is definitely a belly gun. This is something that you would pull out and use at bad breath distances. It, it, it might, they might as well have not put sights on it at all. All right, so let's see if I can hit the uh, that big challenge target right there, the big square one. Well, we're 15, 20 yards away. I'm going to go ahead and charge it. Fed that first round okay. Now let's see if it blows up and kills me. Recoil isn't actually, is not that bad. That's surprisingly decent. Uh, yeah, slide doesn't lock open, so I clicked, weapons clear, pinched the magazine out, and uh, it cycled all six rounds. So, so far, my little $125 Z-Mac pistol's doing pretty good. Let's see how Jason's 25 automatic goes, or how it fares here on the uh, steel target at about 20 yards or so. All right, so I got my little 25 here. It's kind of the European-style mag release on the back there. <clears throat> I think the worst thing that's going to come out of this is I'm shooting this Remington ammunition here. What is this stuff here? 50 grain FMJ 25 ACP. 760 feet per second. I was just at Myers today and I saw a BB gun that shot 999. <clears throat> nice little tiny thing. Right, seven. Let's see, can we go anymore? Nope. Seven rounds. All right. 
This thing I probably pinched my fat hand here. This one does have a manual safety. It looks like it's right here. You can't pull the slide back with it engaged. I'll go ahead and take that off. All right, we chamber it around. Let's see what happens. Ah, I got a malfunction. Let's see here. Something simple. Yeah, I seen a live round in there. All right. All right, so the weapon's clear. So we made it uh, with one malfunction with my Made in Italy gun. I'm gonna go ahead and contribute that to the Remington ammo though. I don't have any other ammo to try. I have to show you guys this. So we just did through the camera so you can see what I see using the sights on this little 25 ACP. You can see that I actually hit the steel plate every single time. It just didn't have enough, uh, enough energy to knock the steel plate over. And you also got a pretty good idea of this thing, um, non-existent sights. I mean, really, this is a, uh, 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 you know, like 1950s era gangster movie shooting style. That's pretty much what this thing is built for, I think, because accuracy is not its strong point. But I will say, we got through six rounds with no malfunctions with that Remington ammo. All right, sixth round. Just out of seven. Let's see if it'll cycle through all of them. Just gonna hail Mary it here into the dirt. Oh yeah. yeah, this thing's getting to work now. But that Smith & Wesson's a little frightened. This little gun may just be so new because I see no wear on the barrel or anything like that. I mean, it literally looks like it just came out of the bluing tanks. It might be so new that it just needed to be broken in. Jason just did another mag dump and no malfunctions, so that's what I'm gonna try to do right now is a mag dump on the, uh, the little challenge swinger target thing there. Perfect function. I think this little guy's breaking in. That's the second magazine it's not had a hiccup on. Now I want to shoot it some more. All right, guys, we're through another, almost halfway through another box of 25 ACP. And this little gun is not having malfunctions anymore. I think it literally just needed to be broken in. Let's see if it's still working. All right. Those are the three challenge targets that have springs on them. This is the affordable plate rack system. Let's see how this little 25 does on those. Oh, just as soon as I say it's working. One hiccup. It can't be. Let's try it again. Is it possible to limp wrist a 25 automatic? Probably. Let's see. Three, four, five, six, seven. So that was the first hiccup in four magazines. Got seven rounds loaded again. Let's try this one more time. All right. 
perfect function. And what's funny is you can see the little smudges in the paint, but it's not even moving the target. <laughs> All right, let's see if it goes another magazine. This little gun's working pretty good. At first I thought I was gonna be able to win this little competition because the 25 just didn't work. Then I was gonna use the ammunition as a scapegoat, but it seems like the, uh, the gun and the ammo are starting to work together just fine. One more try, seven rounds. Look at that. Perfect function out of this little guy. That's a cool little gun. All right, guys. Well, Jason and I both had an incredible amount of fun out here this afternoon shooting our cheap guns. Now, I will say I fully expected my Z-Mac Pop Metal Smith & Wesson, 18 months in production, probably really poor sales, so much so I didn't even know the thing existed, mm -hmm. handgun, functioned 100%. 100%, every time. Wind Not bang, a single mouth Every time. So that blew me away. Then Jason's little 25 that he found for, what was it, $75? 75 bucks. So he has 75 bucks in this one. I have a buck 25 in this one, $200 total. Mm -hmm. And did you have a good time? I did. I mean, we started off with some malfunctions. I mean, looking at this gun and just throughout this video, as we had mentioned, I mean, it looks, brand new almost like somebody had brought this home from i don't know i don't know from where i don't know the right. story behind the gun if it could talk it'd be great but you know somebody brought it home maybe a family member or what didn't uh, want it in the house or whatever it may be needed some money and they sold it to the sold it to the gun store their gun is. store looked it up and they sold it for uh 75 bucks they didn't have much in it and i went out had a few malfunctions with it but it was a ton of fun it started it working itself out and now it's working 100 percent yeah i mean by the time we're done shooting a couple hundred what what we put about 100 rounds through it today 100 rounds the last box of ammo mm -hmm. i had one hiccup and that was it it started working really good the gun has no wear on it it looks like it came out of the factory yesterday mm -hmm. it has made in italy ma stamped on one side but then italian markings on the other i see no import marks mm -hmm. i don't know if the gun was made five years ago or 50 years ago we don't know we I just know we bought these guns at the gun store and we just came out and started shooting them done no research on them no nothing about them i just bought this because it had a smith and wesson logo on it and i was blown away by the fact it was such poor quality that smith and wesson would even consider putting out a z-mac handgun that has fewer features than a high point but to its credit it worked and so he did the really did bike. want that thing to fail we were at the gun store <laughs> and he bought it and he was like I really hope it stumbles all over itself. I'm like, really? You want to spend your money on that? I mean, it was 125 bucks. 125 bucks doesn't exactly come easy, but but if you, if you look, you wanted at, to try it. If you look at this thing, it's much smaller in size than the 380 High Point, and I guess being so small and knowing it was made out of Z-Mac, that I figured it was going to have a, a slide failure of some sort. Now, I did, while we were driving in the car, look it up just to find out something about the gun, like how to take it apart, mm -hmm. which I don't have a punch here, so I'm not going to be able to show you guys unless I beat it apart with a rusty nail. <laughs> but Smith & Wesson actually said that these things, and this is just what I read, I found something on a forum real briefly, that they had a service life of 2,500 rounds. Nice. So 2,500 rounds would seem about right on something that's that thin and made out of Z-Mac. Again, it's much smaller and lighter and handier than the high point pistols. I have a nine millimeter C9. Uh, it's a lot bigger than this thing, but yeah, I mean, as long, long as you don't shoot it a whole bunch, <laughs> 2,500 rounds. Now, I don't know if that's true or not. That's just what I read, uh, it, it, you know, doing a quick search on my cell phone in the car on the trip to the range. But um, yeah, I mean, if I had to stick this thing in a pocket, I think I would trust it to go bang. I, I think I would too. I and, would too. And guys, that's what the point of these videos are, uh, is. It's that it's fun. You can go out to a gun store. You don't have to spend $800 on an H&K to have a good time. You can find bargain guns in the used gun cabinet or on the used gun section of the wall, rifles included, and have a good time with the gun. Now, you never know what you're going to get. Right. I mean, we're rolling the dice. I got lucky here. He got lucky because at first it looked like it was going to be a jam-o-matic. I jam had no idea. Yep, I thought it was going to be a jam -o At the beginning of this video, I was like, well, excellent. I mean, I'm going to throw it in the safe, probably never use it again. But found out it works and it's actually really fun to shoot and i had a fun day <laughs> i never thought I, I i think the last time i shot 25 acp was probably 30 years ago i've, I've never shot it i've never had an interest day in 25 one. acp day one. that thing had a little muzzle flash yeah it's kind of <laughs> cool 
<laughs> anyway, guys, we had a lot of fun. We hope you enjoyed coming out to the range with us to shoot these affordable, I'm still gonna call this junky, affordable junky mm -hmm. handgun on this case and affordable well-made 25 ACP. At least well, we think it's well-made. Yeah, it, it seems be, to be well-made, all steel. Could be horrible. Could be horrible. We don't know who made it, why they made it, how it got here, but nonetheless, it was a lot of fun. Guys, if you'd like to support us here at the Military Arms Channel, the best way to do that is to become a patron. There is a link down below. Please follow that link and pledge something to the channel. In return, I give you original content. We give you smoking deals at Copper Custom. We sell some stuff at really, really great prices. We do everything that we can, including flying guests out uh, once or twice a year. We're going to pick random users. We just did an ammo giveaway. Freedom Munitions every month is giving $100 of ammunition away to our patrons and we just randomly pick a patron to win. And we started doing that this month. So we try to give back to you guys for helping to support the channel. YouTube monetization is gone. Also guys, I'm gonna ask that you join the NRA. I know a lot of you guys have a negative opinion of the NRA, but tell you what guys, trust me, and I'm putting my rear end out there too. I've been one of their staunchest critics. But the NRA has new leadership. Pete Brownell is now the president and CEO of the NRA. They are working very diligently to try to turn that big ship, but they have promised me that they're gonna go on the offense and get out of the defensive posture and try to undo some of these unjust gun laws. If you follow the link down below, that link will give me some money. The money that the NRA gives me for you becoming a new member or renewing your membership, I donate 100% to Hero Hunt, which is a nonprofit organization that helps wounded warriors and first responders, which include police, fire, and rescue. Good guys. So yeah. very good guys. Very good we've guys. we've hunted with them, great folks, and spread that link around. Post it on the forums. The more money you give to that uh, that cause, the better. And that's exactly where 100% of those proceeds go. Guys, also if you want to support us directly, you can just swing by and check us out at Copper Custom. It's our online store, and you can find us there at coppercustom.com. Thanks for watching. Thanks for all those years of support. We'll talk to you guys soon.